Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, I've done several of these in the past. Uh, let me give you the date of this video. It's March of 2018. I wanted to run through my listing of free software packages that are used in amateur radio. Kind of give you a short list of four or five of them that I use all the time. Now in some of my previous videos I went through every one that I had loaded on the machine over here, the computer. I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to show uh, some of the newer amateur radio operators some of the packages that I, free packages, uh, software packages that I think they should download and learn how to use because they're very useful in the hobby. Everything I'm going to show you is free, so uh, uh, please uh, maybe take the time to send a little message to the developer and say thank you for giving us uh, these free, uh, very useful software packages. So with that said, I'm going to take you through a short list of uh, amateur radio software that Telescope Man thinks you must have and must learn how to use. So hang on, we're going to do a little screen capture. And uh, the first step in that is to switch screens. So here we are on the other monitor now. And let me bring up the, uh, let me bring up my folder. You can see I've got a folder up here called Ham Radio. And what I've done, let me open that up, is I've put shortcuts to all my amateur radio software inside this folder so that I can get to them very fast. I don't have to look around on the machine or anything. I just open this up and they're all staring at me, staring straight at me. So that's how I keep track of what packages I've got on this machine. Every time I download one, I put a shortcut to it into this folder. All right, the first package I want to show you while I'm moving the microphone over to the other side here where you get a little bit better audio from me, I hope. I've moved the camera to kind of in front of me right now. Anyway, the first package is called Ham Clock. Ham Clock. And that's just what it is. It's a ham clock uh, that has your current time. Uh, 1401, it's in 24 hour format. But what's neat about it is it also has UTC time, universal time, over on the right hand side. And this is the time, the universal time, that amateur radio operators are, will record in their contact logs. Uh, whenever they make a contact. So this is highly useful to have running on the desktop somewhere uh, so you can grab that actual UTC time and it's going to be fairly accurate too. It's going to match whatever you've got uh, loaded on your computer for the computer time. So I'm going to assume your computer time is correct. And this will be correct. The next package I want to show you is really something uh, if you're interested in shortwave radio listening. Shortwave radio listening. Uh, this software package is called ELB View 30. ELB View 30. And what it does, it reached out there, it got about 1,100 shortwave stations. It tells you uh, <clears throat> the times that they are on from 1,200 to 2,250. And the days they're active. Uh, if you see all seven days, like right here, uh, they're on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, between these times here. So right now, we're on the Voice of America. You can see that's highlighted. And if you look at the map, you can see it's a beam antenna pointed east. 
pointed east uh, toward Europe and Africa. So uh, the map kind of indicates what kind of antenna they're using. Let's pick another one. <clears throat> Let's see this one right here. Uh, you can see it on the map up here as a circle. That means they've got an omnidirectional antenna. The reason I'm showing you this, if you're using this software and the antenna looks like this, okay, it's pointed up here, all right, and you're right here somewhere, well, you probably won't ever hear it until propagation is good enough for it to go completely around the world. Then you might hear it because it's not pointed at you and it's not omnidirectional. So, uh, it's real handy to tell, uh, you know, if you might have a possibility of hearing it just by looking at this little map up here and determining what kind of antenna they have. So anyway, that's the next one I would say you have to have. And the next one, of course, is a very famous one. It's uh, FL Digi, FL Digi. Uh, decodes a multitude of digital signals. And if you go up right over here, here where it says uh, operator mode, you can see all the various digital modes that it decodes, including Morse code. That's what CW is, Morse code. <laughs> It'll decode that if the sender is a good Morse code sender. If he's sort of not very good, then it won't decode it. But for all these other modes, it's computer to computer, and it does a great job of decoding the signals. And I'll draw your attention to PSK31. Uh, let me see right here, PSK31. All right, very popular mode. And of all these modes, uh, I would say you need to learn RTTY, RIDI, Radio Teletype. And you need to learn PSK31. Those are the two most important, in my opinion, on this whole list. But some of these other, like Throb and uh, Contesta, and some of the other ones are... Off and on, there'll be some signals around, but they're not on there almost every day. Almost every day, you're going to find radio teletype, RTTY, and you're going to find PSK31 almost every day. And, of course, CW, almost every day of the week. So, <clears throat> you need to have FLDigi, FLDigi. That's what this software package is, FLDigi. The next one is kind of an unusual one called NetLogger. NetLogger. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you enjoy HF or VHF, UHF nets, nets, radio nets, then you need to get this. Let's uh, go up here and select a net. And it went out on the internet looking around for Anybody that's using NetLogger, anyone that's using NetLogger, these people are using NetLogger right here, right now, to log the people that have checked into the radio net. So if we look at YL Systems third period radio net at 14.332 frequency single sideband, and we monitor that, it'll go out there and get us the list of people that have checked into that net. Usually the top person is the net control. And then from time to time you'll see other uh, kind of purplish, bluish, dark bluish, highlighted people that are relays uh, in this. <coughs> And uh, they'll go right down the list here, and all these people can do a little uh, contacting <clears throat> with other people on the net or with net control. <clears throat> and anyway, the net control uses this software 
to keep track of everybody and to if he's gonna if he or she is gonna run the list, they'll start here and then they'll go 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 here and so forth till they get finished. <clears throat> it's just a great way to keep track of everybody. Uh, <clears throat> there is uh, what we call almost in instant messaging. All aim. See this aim window. Let's open that up. I'll drag it across. It's on the other screen. <clears throat> and it's like uh, almost instant messaging between these people right here. And you can type in a message right here and hit enter. And it'll transmit it to everybody else that's on the net. So while the net is going on, you can have a side conversation uh, with other people on the net over here using the almost instant messaging window. <clears throat> Again, this is called NetLogger. Uh, and as I said, I'll post uh, links to this uh, onto the uh, comment section once I'm finished. The final one, I didn't want to open it up till I got to it because it continually bugs me to... Uh, have a radio attached to it, which I don't right now, and that's WSJTX. WSJTX, this is that famous software by Joe Taylor that does JT65, JT9, and FT8. And if we look right up here in the mode, you can see the modes that it actually does, and you can see I'm, I'm over there on to... Uh, I'm over there on uh, JT65 right now. Anyway, <clears throat> this is a package that if you want to work FT8, this is the only one that works FT8 right now, which is extremely popular right now. So if you want to work that mode, uh, which is great for long distance communications, then you're going to have to uh, download WSJTX and learn how to use this software right here. So, <clears throat> let me get you back over on my smiling face some kind of way. Oh, I had the camera moved because I was using it. We'll just kind of turn it. I'll just do this. No, I'm going to do this. And that's good enough. So, <clears throat> had it moved over there so... Uh, uh, so that the mic would pick up a little bit better. Anyway, until next time, I wish you uh, clear skies in 73. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. It's still up there. Anyway, hope this helps some of y'all. Uh, these, these are the few packages that I basically use over and over and over again usually at least once or twice every week. Uh, and they're the ones that you actually need to have on your machine if you want to work some of these modes that you see Telescope Man working. With that said, register on YouTube. Go ahead and do it. Everybody else is registered. Then after you register, subscribe to these videos. I appreciate you all subscribing and Come on back because there's going to be some more. I'm not finished. See y'all later. Be good.